Hello, you're welcome to Medical Sciences Made Easy by Naftari Muhumza. Always at your service. And today we want to talk about de novo synthesis, or what we call lipogenesis, de novo synthesis of fatty acids. And this de novo synthesis, the word de novo means new. So we want to see how we synthesize a new fatty acid in our body. And these fatty acids, they are formed within the liver majorly, in the liver and the mammary glands. That is where we see it majorly happening. And we see it at a lesser extent in the adipocytes and in the kidneys. That is lipogenesis. And it is triggered majorly by high carbohydrate, a meal with high carbohydrate content. When you have taken a high carbohydrate meal, or if you have taken, if you have low fat, reduced fat content in the body. It is triggering whereby this one triggers hormones like glucagon. Triggers hormones, actually hormones which, which stimulate lipogenesis is insulin. And then the one which inhibits, we shall see them. So this, a high carbohydrate content or low fat content triggers insulin hormone. And this insulin hormone is the one that stimulates this lipogenesis. Whereby, when we have acetyl-CoA in the mitochondria, acetyl-CoA, A, this acetyl-CoA A is going to join with oxaloacetate, joins with oxaloacetate in the mitochondria to form citrate. Oxaloacetate is a two carbon sugar. No, acetyl CoA is a two carbon, then this is a four carbon, and they combine to form a six carbon sugar in, an, in the presence of an enzyme. And this enzyme is known as citrate synthase. So this citrate synthase catalyzes the joining of acetyl CoA with oxaloacetate to form citrate. Why are we forming citrate? Is that the acetyl CoA is, cannot cross the inner mitochondrial membrane. So to, to, ex, to exit it, we need citrate so that it can be taken to the cytosol. Because the first step in the novo synthesis is the transfer. The first step is the transfer of acetyl CoA, coenzyme A, from the mitochondria, from the mitochondrial matrix to the cytosol. So we want to see how do we transfer acetyl CoA from the mitochondria into the cytosol. We have seen it cannot cross. So what we need to do is to convert it into citrate in the presence of oxaloacetate. Whereby after forming this citrate, the citrate is moved via citrate translocase into the cytosol. And when citrate reaches in the cytosol, we are going to see it being cleaved. There is an enzyme which cleaves this citrate to form acetyl coenzyme A and, and oxaloacetate. And this enzyme that cleaves, it is a lyase and it is known as citrate lyase. So citrate lyase is the one that catalyzes the cleavage of citrate to acetyl CoA and oxaloacetate. And this is what we wanted. We wanted acetyl CoA into the cytosol. So to transfer it, we first convert it to citrate, then citrate passes through citrate translocase into the cytosol where it is cleaved to form acetyl CoA. As we normally, I normally tell you that we should never go, our God does not believe in wastage. We see this oxaloacetate formed being converted to mallet. And this mallet is converted in the presence of mallet, dehydrogenase enzyme, where it utilizes NAD, NADH, and it forms NAD plus. Then the mallet, which is formed, is converted is converted to pyruvate, 
it is converted to pyruvate by an enzyme known as malic enzyme so malic enzyme is the one that catalyzes the formation of malate conversion of malate to pyruvate why why how are we, why are we converting malate to pyruvate is that we want the pyruvate to go back into the mitochondria so this pyruvate which is formed it is taken back into the mitochondria via pyruvate translocase so we find our pyruvate back into the mitochondria and this pyruvate when it reaches the mitochondria it can undergo decarboxylation to form another acetyl CoA by the process known as decarboxylation where we remove carbon dioxide in the presence of pyruvate carboxylase decarboxylase So this is what we call transfer of acetyl coenzyme A from mitochondria to the cytosol. After, after transferring this acetyl CoA from the mitochondria in the form of citrate into the cytosol, step number two, we are going to see this acetyl CoA being converted. We are going to convert conversion, we are going to see convert conversion of acetyl CoA enzyme A to maronyl CoA. Maronyl coenzyme A. We are converting a two carbon compound to a three carbon compound. And this step is always known as rate limiting step. That if I have acetyl CoA, acetyl coenzyme A, I add a bicarbonate. We add a carbon dioxide in the form of a bicarbonate. And this one, the presence of energy produced by ATP, we see ATP being hydrolyzed to ADP plus phosphate inorganic in the presence of acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. This enzyme, acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase, is the one that is catalyzing the addition of the carbon dioxide from bicarbonate. So bicarbonate is acting as a source of carbon dioxide, which adds a two carbon, we add one, the second carbon, the, the third carbon, to form maronite coenzyme A. So this is the rate limiting step. This is known as rate limiting step. So if I want to regulate this cycle, I can regulate it at this step, whereby I can either increase the synthesis of acetyl CoA carboxylase or I can limit it by decreasing the synthesis of acetyl CoA carboxylase. So, majorly, we have seen two steps transfer of acetyl CoA from the mitochondria to the cytosol in the form of citrate and it is cleaved to form acetyl CoA. The second step is converting this acetyl CoA by addition of a carbon dioxide. In the presence of, in the form of a bicarbonate, to form maronyl CoA, which is a three carbon, and this is the one that acts as the precursor for the novel synthesis of fatty acids. And after forming maronyl CoA, another step we need an enzyme known as fatty acid synthase, or you can call it FAS. FAS. This is a malic enzyme, and this malic enzyme contains it contains seven malic enzymes. It contains seven enzymes of them, and this enzyme it has, if I can draw it, it has it is denoted by letter E, whereby it has the SCP portion bound to pan to phosphopanthene, what you will abbreviate it as pan SH. And another arm is having cysteine group of the ketoacyl synthase. So this is our fatty acyl synthase, which is going to catalyze the elongation step during fatty acid synthesis. So in the next video, we are going to look at how these seven malic enzymes work hand in hand to bring about a 16 carbon fatty acid of palmitic acid, whereby we shall see seven enzymes like
we shall see enzymes like acetyl CoA transacylase. We shall see maronyl coenzyme A transacylase. We are going to see ketoacyl synthase. We shall see three ketoacyl reductase, which uses an ADPH. Then we shall also see hydratase and then enoyl reductase using also another second ADPH. Then finally, after seven cycles, we shall cleave using thioesterase enzyme, or what we call diacylase. In the next video, we shall talk about that. Thank you so much for listening until the end. Always remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Always share your comments so that we can continue to grow. Thank you so much.